We called it, you know, a separation theory because, in a sense, the fantasy bond or core defense is a defense against being a separate person. Somehow in finding and seeking fusion, people feel a sense of safety. So in a sense, the fantasy bond is an attempt to heal the fracture of separation anxiety and later death anxiety. It's an attempt to heal that wound. So people connect in various ways to other people and fuse and, and in that process, they lose themselves to some extent. They adopt the attitudes, feelings, criticality of the other person. So, so to that extent, they're not differentiated. So partly, really, we're talking about uh, breaking with a defensive approach to life. Defense, it's logical to defend yourself against pain of all, uh, all sorts. But in the process, it bends us out of shape to protect ourselves and defend. And in that, we lose a sense of ourselves to a very varying degrees. And we depend on these fantasies and uh, defenses to the extent that we've been really hurt. The more hurt we are, the more we rely on defensive solutions to protect ourselves. It's logical. But the more we defend ourselves, the more we lose ourselves, ultimately. Or we, just, we actually, we want the person, ideally, to feel and experience their own life fully. To feel their feelings, to react, to be open to life. Rather than defend it against it, wary, passive, frightened, holding back, protect, self-protective. We want them to reach out to life, and these are the elements that interfere. So we're talking about separating from those elements that are limiting and that are antagonistic to the self. That's what we're talking about, and that's how we call it separation theory. But our goal is an autonomous person who is vulnerable and close to their feelings and lives an honest life. And incidentally, people who achieve that tend to be moral as well.